Today I'm going to show you guys how to recover a sky in Photoshop. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome to Florin. My name is Aaron Nace. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel on YouTube. Today we're doing a really cool episode. We've got a great portrait by Leah and she's one of our contest winners from last week. So if you guys want to have your images edited on Florin, all you need to do is submit them in a comment on our contest episodes. We're doing some very, very cool stuff with this. We're going to be bringing in sky, working with highlights and shadows and just making this already cool image much, uh, well, we're just going to do what we're going to do to it. <laughs> Let's get into it. Uh, I love this image. It's so happy and fun and just the styling is really well done. The composition, it, it's simple. There's just enough details in here. Um, just everything about this image is really great. I, I really do love it a lot. So what we're going to do, let's go ahead and start off by bringing in some of the detail here. We've got a little bit of shadow. Um, we, we do have quite a bit of detail here. I'm just going to see what else we can get. And oftentimes this will happen when you're working with an image. You'll get, um, you know, your darks will be a little bit too dark. Your lights will be a little bit too light. So I'm going to show you a great way to fix that. So here in the background layer, I'm going to hit Command J and that's going to duplicate that. Now I'm going to go to Image and then down to your new adjustments and we're going to go to Shadows slash Highlights. Okay, let's go ahead and bring that over here. And here we can see the on the top that if you have it just set like that, you're going to want to click on this More Options there. All right, let's go ahead and just start with all this stuff right down here at zero. And um, all right, first we want to work up our shadows so we can bring up our shadows. It's just going to make a little bit brighter. And you can work with what's called your tonal width as well and also your radius. So it's going to kind of be a, a trick to kind of play with these three sliders. And honestly, what I do is just uh, I do it till it looks good. I don't, there's no formula for me anyway with this kind of stuff. I just do it until it looks right. It's like, meh, that doesn't look good. That looks good. Not as good. Not as good. Good. <laughs> it's very technical. All right, let's go over here in our highlights and we can recover some information here with our highlights as well. So I'm going to bring this right up there and we can see we're able to, where the sky was a little bit more blown out, we can kind of bring that in as well. All right, here where it says tonal width, we'll just bring that right to about there. And then radius, ooh, not looking good. Let's keep that nice and low. All right, and see what we've got there? I think we're looking pretty good so far. So let's go ahead and hit OK. And there's the before and after. We're just getting a lot more detail here in the, um, in the shadows as well as the highlights. So really, really nice. It's kind of setting us up for um, being able to adjust um, some of the information here, especially in the sky. And that's what I want to focus a lot on is the sky. Now, Leah actually said, she was like, how can I get more information in the sky and uh, without it looking like fake or hokey and things like that? And that can be really tough. So I'm going to show you guys a, a relatively quick way to cut someone out, and then we're going to work on the sky a little bit. So we are going to use the pen tools. Hit P for the pen tool, and uh, as soon as I say pen tool, a lot of people will go like, no, but it's really not that bad, I promise. We just need to cut him out right where this guy is. So with the pen tool, all I'm going to do, I'm just going to use this guy right here. You just click and drag wherever you want it to go. So just click here on his arm. I'm just going to start up here, go over around his head, and then come down the other side. So we're going to start here, click and then drag, and then click and drag, and click and drag, and click and drag. And if you ever need to make like an angle, hold down Alt or Option, and you can kind of move this point around, and you make a little angle there, and click and drag. And if you do need to move any of your points over here, all you have to do is hold down the Control or the Command key. All right, and it doesn't have to be perfect around his head. Mostly I'm worried, well, I'm not worried. It's going to turn out fine, everybody. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not worried, but mostly I'm paying attention to his arm areas because that's, um, that's where it's like kind of light on light, and it's just going to turn out a little bit better with a well-defined edge. All right, there we go, and let's cut out his ears. Oh, man, his ears are huge. I wish my ears were that big hear so well. <laughs> they say your ears never stop growing. I can't wait. <laughs> Flurn in 60 years from now, I'll still be making Photoshop videos and I'm going to have huge ears and everyone's going to just assume that I know what I'm talking about. I hope I will know what I'm talking about 60 years from now if I'm still making Flurn episodes. All right, there we go and uh, we're just going to come right on down there. Cool. Now let's go ahead and bring this back there. And um, now what we can do, we have that kind of selected around him. You can see that really didn't take too long. 
I'm going to right click right inside of the selection and I'm going to say make selection. We'll feather this by about 0.3 pixels and hit OK. Now, if you want to save your path just to make sure you can come back to it, click in your paths dialog and we'll just call this um, man. There we go. I get very creative with my path naming. OK, so now well, that path, let's just go ahead and click off it. The path is actually a selection now. So we can use this selection on a layer mask or whatever you want to do. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to put it on a layer mask. So I'm going to grab this adjustment layer. We're going to go down to levels. And then I can start adjusting, adjusting my levels. And you'll notice that if I hold Alter Option, that the path I just made is already loaded into the layer mask. So you can see it's, a, it's pretty nice there. It looks like the dude and stuff like that. All right, let's go ahead into our levels. And I'm going to go to our blue channel. Let's just click here on our bright point there. And I'm going to bring down our blues just like that. Or I could push my blues in, something like that. There we go. We're just going to start playing around. Now, this is affecting the color of our man, which we really don't want. We want the opposite of that. So all you have to do is click on your layer mask and hit Command-I, and it's going to start affecting everything else, which is pretty nice. OK, so now that we're affecting the background, all we need to do is get the right color there. So let's go to our green channel. We'll put a little bit of green in the sky. There we go. A red channel. Let's take this and drag that down a little bit. I don't want to go too crazy with this, but um, there we go. A little bit more color in this guy. It looks kind of nice. All right, there we go. Let's do our red channel just a little bit less. OK, now also, I don't need this to be visible everywhere, especially not on our puppy and things like that. So I'm going to click on this layer mask. I'm going to use my brush tool. And then I'm going to paint black at about a 40% flow right down here, just using it like a nice soft edge brush. All right, and there we go. And that looks pretty good. Because we do want some of the sky color to kind of like come in here and be visible there. Because the color of the sky will wind up influencing the colors in your image, by the way. All right. It makes sense, right? The sky's a giant light source. It, your, the colors of the sky would affect your image. Let's take our lights down just a little bit. All right, and I'm going to change the opacity on that just a little bit. So we do have some blue, but it's not like overwhelming. And that's looking really good. Now, another thing that I kind of see here is um, maybe this guy was composited or something like that. I'm seeing a little bit of halo around our subject here. So what we're going to do is I don't know that this would be necessarily something you would need to do to start with. But if it does look like, you can kind of see like a, a little bit of a glow around him there. Um, we're just going to go to our paths. We're going to command click on our path again. And or you can just select the path and then go to your pen tool and then right click and say make selection again. So a bunch of different ways to do this. But we're going to go back to our path now that it's selection. And on a new layer, I'm going to hit shift command I, which is going to inverse the selection. And now, basically, I'm going to clone stamp from the outside in. So we, we're going to get rid of this kind of halo that's around them. And again, you'll, you'll just see what I'm talking about uh, once I do it. OK, so S for the clone stamp tool. And we're going to clone stamp sample outside and just paint in right into the center. Kind of get rid of this halo that we've got here. All right. And by halo, there's like kind of a white glow right around him. I don't know if you guys can see that. But I'll show you the before and the after. And you'll be like, oh, now I know what you're talking about. All right, so since I inverted that selection, really the only thing I'm doing is painting the background now. It's, it's not going to paint inside of him. So there we go. That's what we're kind of talking about there. I'll probably zoom out and see what we're talking about. So he had a little bit of a glow around him. I'm just kind of like reducing that down just a little bit. All right. We're already looking good. Great. Now, the next thing we're going to do, I'm going to grab an adjustment layer. Let's go to Curves. And I'm just going to darken the floor down just a bit here. All right, let's bring that down. I'm going to hit Command-I on that. And then here, with a large paintbrush, we're going to paint white at about a 10 or 20% flow right down here. All right, and oftentimes, if you darken down the bottom mode of an image, it'll help draw a little bit more balance to the image as a whole. All right, so darkening it down, now we kind of can see that, oh, maybe, maybe your eyes should look up. That's, that's kind of the idea there. Your eyes tend to go away from darker spaces, and they go 
um, your eyes will go to a lighter space. All right, that looks really good. Now let's add a little bit more depth to this image. So I'm going to create a new layer. And uh, we're going to do a stamp visible, so that Shift Option Command E. It's just like a copy of everything you see. It's on its own layer, and then you can do all kinds of things. And usually, I use this technique for sharpening. So a stamp visible layer, a lot of the time I use for sharpening. So we're going to hit Shift Command U, and that's going to make it black and white. All right. Now let's change this from normal to soft light, and then we're going to go to Filter, Other, and then High Pass. And you can do a lot of really cool stuff here. Um, Taking your radius down low is not going to do a whole lot. Right over here is just going to be like a pretty nice um, sharpening. <laughs> I forgot what I was going to say. All right, it's going to be a nice sharpening layer. And then bring it up a little bit higher, and then you can kind of get like that HDR effect here. So we can actually choose you know, somewhere right here in the middle. Let's choose something like that. All right, and I'm going to change this from normal, some, from overlay to soft light. And that's a little bit harsh of an effect. But now what I can do, I'm going to put a black layer mask on that. So Alt or Option, and click on your layer mask icon. And then we're going to paint white just around the areas that we want. And that's just going to look, bring a little bit of mid-tone contrast back into like your subject's faces and you know, maybe put some on his shoes there. So turning that off and on, we can just see it'll draw your eyes right to, right to your subjects just a little bit more. All right, let's do the same thing with just a little bit uh, different type of sharpening. So again, new layer, shift command, option, <laughs> shift alt, or option command E is going to be a snap visible layer. And then shift command U will uh, desaturate that. All right, I know it's a lot. I have to say it. I know it's a lot. <laughs> but and then we're going to go to high pass. And then again, you can choose to have this be a little bit bigger, or it'll just be like a nice sharpening effect down a little bit lower. OK, and a black layer mask on that again. And then we're going to paint white right over top of like our subject's eyes. And that radius that I'm choosing, that's going to be different for every single image that you guys um, you work on. It has to do with how close or how far your subjects are from the camera, what you want to actually sharpen. All right, next, just for a little bit of coloring, because I think it'll be fun, let's go to our levels adjustment layer. And I want to pop some blues into the shadows, so I think it'd be nice and some yellows into the highlights. And then we'll just add a little bit more red to this image. All right. And then here at the very end, I think I'm going to just lower the saturation just a little bit, um, kind of make it more of that like classic look. Let's put that below our other layer. Just draw a little bit less attention to the vest and more to, more to our uh, friend's head. All right. And let's go to a curves adjustment layer. I'm going to bring this up a little bit, hit Command-I on there, and then we're going to paint white on our layer mask. There we go. Cool. And that's too much, so we're just going to back that down just a little bit. OK, now that we have that, let's go ahead and shift click all of those layers and group them together. And then what we can do, let's go ahead and open our group. Any of these things we can go in here and change now, because we're kind of got the idea of our final. It's like, do we want the ground to be a little bit darker? Do we want the sharpening to be more or less? This color in the background, let's go ahead and click here. Do we want that to come out a little bit more? Do we want maybe a little bit more green in there? So let's click over here, go to our green channel, pull up our greens a little bit. So you can go in here and play around with these things even after you've created your layers, which is really, really nice. It'll kind of like give you the option. There we go. All right, and I think that looks really good. Um, so let's just look at the before and the after. There's our before, and uh, you can see the, the sky is a little bit too bright, and uh, we don't have a ton of detail right down here, and there's not a whole lot of color work. And then the after, really cool. The sky, it's a little bit too dark, isn't it? Too much color in the sky. All right, let's take this, and I'm going to just lower the opacity on that just a little bit. All right, I really like to look at before and afters because it kind of gives you an idea of like, ooh, did I overdo something? Did I, did I underdo something? And at the end, if you just want to like kind of meet halfway, just take your entire group and lower the opacity of the entire group. And sometimes I overdo things. It's like I think it looks good, and then I'll come back a little bit later and be like, oh, I wish I hadn't have done that so much. So you can just kind of group all your layers and lower the opacity of the entire group right over here. And that's usually going to be a pretty good way to just kind of like meet in the middle there. And um, yeah, that's what, that's what we like. We'll do, let's take a little bit of the sharpening 
away from his head. There we go. I'm just going to paint black on this layer as well. Um, oftentimes, if you sharp, sharpen someone, if they have like uh, wrinkles, things like that, the sharpening is going to bring that out. So if you know, I just want to make him look a little bit better. All right, and there's our before and the after. And there we go, guys. Thanks so much for watching Flurn. We hope you enjoy our videos. We hope you subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can do that right down below. And if you have any questions or comments, leave them. We read them and we will answer them on air. Thanks again, guys. I'll flirt you later. Bye, everyone. Bye. Hey, Daisy. Can you bring Daisy up here? Bring her so she can be in the videos. This is who I learned all my Photoshop from. Isn't that right? <laughs> Hi guys, Kat from Flurn here. For more information about this video, please be sure to check out our website at flurn.com. Check out our new pro tutorials, which include beautiful glowing skin and juicy kicks. We also have some awesome free videos like how to do an editorial corporate shoot and how to create lens flare in Photoshop. If you or anyone you know would like a free tutorial, please sign up for our newsletter. It's free. <laughs> this is Kat and I'll flirt you later.